And you're looking at Felix Savon, probably the best amateur boxer in the world right now. But uh, that's what you're going to get from the Cuban boxers, the party line. And, and you have to think, at least from an American standpoint, if they were allowed to leave the country, they wouldn't turn pro. Just as many of the, or several of the Cuban baseball players have defected are now playing professionally. But uh, Zavone is the best the amateur world has to offer. And I'm not sure he, he really progresses much and gets any better because he's beaten all there is in the amateur ranks. Well, I like to think there's a lot of professionals that are glad Felix Zavone doesn't turn professional. Darrell Dixon, not one of them. He's looking forward to this. He was stopped in the third round in the world championships against Savone he felt like uh, he never saw the right coming was not intimidated in that bout and has a few wrinkles here he, he, if he can get inside get turned he wants to go to the body of Savone and uh, with the size difference you can see it's pretty formidable here for Savone he might be able to do that okay Savone yeah. is six feet four inches tall he has everything power speed experience uh, Pro box trainer told me during the Goodwill Games in Seattle that at that time he felt Savone would be a top five pro boxer and he had uh, been allowed to turn professional. But much is in line uh, with like Teofilo Stevenson, the great Cuban boxer who dominated amateurs. Dixon goes down, but that's a slip. There's a good uppercut there by Savone. And now an uppercut against a shorter boxer could be nasty. There's another one. Savone has, has beaten everything the United States has to offer. He beat Ray Mercer in a dual meet in 1988. He beat Shannon Briggs in 1991, the Pan American Games. He beat Danell Nicholson in the 92 Olympics. He beat Javier Alvarez, a three-time U.S. champion in the Goodwill Games. They just keep coming. He keeps beating them. Well, Dixon has to get closer in this bout. He, he, there's no way he can stand out there. And Savone immediately realized that the left and the right uppercuts would do some damage. You and, uh, saw in our opening, Kevin, uh, Savone hitting John Bryan, knocking his headgear completely off. Yeah, I can, I can understand that. Well, I'll tell you, if he keeps hitting uh, Darrell Dixon with uppercuts, this, this overhand right is going to be lethal. Overhand right for Savone, that is. And Savone is going to the uppercut. He's trying to catch Darrell Dixon ducking in. Savone has not lost a bout since 1986 when he lost to a South Korean in the Spartakiad. That's a good right by Darrell Dixon. Dixon is game. There's no question about that. And he's beaten some pretty good U.S. boxers to get to where he is. He upset Bobby Harris in the semifinals of the U.S. championships and then beat the veteran Javier Alvarez to win the championship in Colorado Springs. So this is another case of them asking Darrell Dixon to do things that he hasn't done before. He looks awkward. George Benedetto telling both boxers, listen to the commands. Three commands, stop, box, and break. The universal commands to cut through the language barriers. Welcome back to Biloxi, round two, heavyweight, six-time world champion Felix Savone of Cuba in red, Darrell Dixon of the United States from Chicago in blue. Smith now living, or Dixon now living and training in Linwood, Washington under his coach Steve Smith. Now Dixon also doing what his coaches tell him. He's doing a good job of trying to get inside on Savone. He was hit with a right. That's how the, uh, the bout was stopped in the world championships. He said he never saw it coming. He said if he did, he wouldn't have hit him. <laughs> you have to like Dixon's heart. Several of these U.S. boxers uh, thought as if they were intimidated, maybe a little scared going into the competition tonight, to be honest with you. And you can understand that. They're facing the best amateur boxers in the world. And for some of the U.S. boxers, their first taste of international competition. Such was the case with Carlos Navarro at 112 pounds. He, he fought one of the stronger bouts. Many he did fight even one, although the decision went against him, three to two. You're right. That was an excellent bout. And, and you know, Dixon has taken pretty much what Savone has in his arsenal, and he's still up. And he's causing Savone some problems. And Savone coming from every angle, lefts, rights, uppercuts, and uh, has not really been able to take uh, Darrell Dixon out of there or keep him from coming. Darrell Dixon started boxing at the age of six, and then he quit. And his dad forced him to go back into boxing after he got hurt in an automobile accident. He injured his hip, and his weight ballooned up to 265 pounds. So his dad forced him to go back into the gym, and he renewed his interest in boxing. 
takes a caution to uh, Dixon right for a butt. Keep his head up. His head is way low. He's, he's ducking in. Well, he's only 5'10". Yeah, that makes him about 4'8 as he comes in. You know, you almost wish, this is an American speaking from an American viewpoint, but you wish you, Savone could get an opportunity to face some of the top professionals to find out just how good he really is. Well, the other thing is, too, if he came in as an amateur, his experience level would be lower against top competition. It really wouldn't be fair. He'd have to go for some time against professional. He certainly looks like a man in there with a child in terms of size here. Looks like a. Oh, the uh, I'll set his cigar. Or he's an assistant coach. It's one of the assistant coaches for Cuba is being ejected from the arena. They've been warned several times tonight not to verbally coach, and the assistant coach has been asked to leave. That's what that was all about. He was shouting out commands to Savone, and George Benedetto said, that's it, you're gone. If Savone would throw the left uppercut and the, and the right overhand behind it, I think Durrell might be in some trouble. Dixon trying to keep the pressure on, trying to pound away at Savone's body. That, that overhand right, that one right there is, is uh, a good thing Dixon got. Wide open. He's been ducking. Dixon is game, that's for sure. Oh, he's he is, yeah. And Savone with everything he has. Boxing action will continue from Biloxi in a moment. A uh, night of amateur boxing uh, coming to an end. Actually, an afternoon of amateur boxing in Biloxi, Mississippi. The final round of the final bout. The highly touted Cuban team has won 10 of the first 11 bouts. These are the heavyweights. Six-time world champion Felix Savone in red and a very game young man from Chicago, Daryl Dixon in blue, giving it everything he has. Savone has stepped up the pace. A lot more movement from the world champion. Right uppercut there. nothing else this competition will give the United States an idea of how hard they'll have to work to get ready for the Goodwill Games next summer in St. Petersburg. Cubans brought eight world champions to this competition. And every one of them looked like a world champion. There were some good performances by the U.S. and this is one of them. Dixon, not as skilled as Simone, but definitely showing his toughness. Fans are really behind Dixon. But Savone is too slick, too skilled, too talented, too experienced, too everything. Dixon's arms are so much shorter. He needs to get in close to score with that overhand right. The overhand right for Dixon, too, is the one he wants to use. But he needs to get close, and Savone won't let him get close. He makes him pay like that every time he gets near it. Boxer, such was the case with Teofilo Stevenson. Many people felt he was the best boxer in the world, but he never had a chance to fight professionally. Well, things are happening around the world. Stranger things have happened. Dixon scored a moment ago with a good straight left in the face of Simone. Simone would be right at the peak of his career if he was a pro. He's 26. Right hand by Simone. Good job. Look at Darrell Dixon. Keep coming. I mean, he has taken a beating in this bout. And he has never once slowed down. He's boring in. Dixon trying to be the aggressive, keep the pressure on, but he just hasn't been able to land enough punches. And he's done a tremendous job getting inside and shortening the distance, which is something everyone was told to do and not everyone did so for Darrell Dixon I think he's shown a lot to the coaches he can adapt a little bit he just did with a better box good left hand by Dixon so the bout and the competition coming to an end we'll be back with the decision and a final word from Biloxi in a moment and here comes the decision in the heavyweight division and the winner, ladies and gentlemen, by unanimous decision in the red corner, Felix.
Savon. Felix Savon, the winner by unanimous decision. Cuba wins the competition 11 to 1 here in Biloxi. And let's go back to the move along in this USA Cuba matchup, which Cuba is now.